Rendezvous 36. Plants. Rendezvous 36 is where we meet the true lords of life, the plants. Life could get along without animals and without fungi, but abolish the plants and life would rapidly cease. Plants sit indispensably at the base, the very foundation, of nearly every food chain. They are the most noticeable creatures on our planet, the first living things any visiting Martian would remark. By far the largest single organisms that ever lived are plants, and an impressive percentage of the world's biomass is locked up in plants. This doesn't just happen to be so. Some such high proportion follows necessarily from the fact that almost all biomass comes ultimately from the sun via photosynthesis. Most of it in green plants, and the transaction at every link of the food chain is only about 10% efficient. The surface of the land is green because of plants, and the surface of the sea would be green too if its floating carpet of photosynthesizers were macroscopic plants instead of microorganisms too small to reflect noticeable quantities of green light. It is as though plants are going out of their way to cover every square centimeter with green, leaving none uncovered. And that is pretty much what they are doing, for a very sensible reason. A finite number of photons reaches the planet's surface from the sun, and every last photon is precious. The total number of photons that can be garnered from its star by a planet is limited by its surface area, with the complication that only one side is facing its star at any one time. From a plant's point of view, a square centimetre of the Earth's surface that is anything but green amounts to a negligently wasted opportunity to sweep up photons. Leaves are solar panels, as flat as possible to maximise photons caught per unit expenditure. There is a premium on placing your leaves in such a position that they are not overshadowed by other leaves, especially somebody else's leaves. This is why forest trees grow so tall. Tall trees that are not in the forest are out of place, probably because of human interference. It is a complete waste of effort to grow tall if you're the only tree around. It's much better to spread out sideways, like grasses, because that way you trap more photons per unit of effort put into growing. As for forests, it is no accident that they are so dark. Every photon that makes it to the ground represents failure on the part of the leaves above. With few exceptions, such as Venus flytraps, plants don't move. With few exceptions, such as sponges, animals do. Why the difference? It must have to do with the fact that plants eat photons, while animals ultimately eat plants. We need that ultimately, of course, because the plants are sometimes eaten at second or third hand via animals eating other animals. But what is it about eating photons that makes it a good idea to sit still with roots in the ground? What is it about eating plants, as opposed to being a plant, that makes it a good idea to move? Well, given that plants stay still, animals have got to move in order to eat them. But why do plants stay still? Maybe it has something to do with the need to be rooted in order to suck nutrients out of the soil. Maybe there is too unbridgeable a distance between the best shape to be if you want to move, solid and compact, and the best shape to be if you want to expose yourself to lots of photons, high surface area, hence straggly and unwieldy. Whatever the reason, of the three great groups of mega-life that have evolved on this planet, two of them, the fungi and the plants, stay mostly still as statues, while the third group, the animals, do most of the scurrying about, most of the active go-getting. Plants even make use of animals to do their scurrying for them, and flowers, with their beauteous colours, shapes and scents, are the instruments of this manipulation.